One of the, if not the most nutrient dense foods on the planet as defined by a food that contains every essential nutrient that you need to survive and live. In other words, you can eat this and be okay and eat nothing else. There's only one type of food that fits this category. It's meat. That's right, this is a fact, okay? This is unequivocal. Meat contains every single essential nutrient, macronutrient and micronutrient you need to live for your body to function. It's extremely nutrient dense. Now, just eating meat is not ideal, but removing meat from your diet, whoa, you better make up for that with other foods and typically supplements. So when you hear people say, hey, get rid of meat, don't eat meat, you need to do a lot of research and a lot of work to make up for all those nutrients you are missing when you stop eating meat. Bringing this up because the push. Brought to you by Big Beef. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I right. wish they sponsored us. That'd be awesome. I know, I'd be all for it. <laughs> Just throw us a steak every once in a while. Uh, <clears throat> I'm saying this because I brought this up on, on an earlier podcast about the UN is making a call to um, their, you know, their, uh, I don't know, member nations to reduce meat consumption, in particular America. Oh, I saw now, that. Now, here's the problem, okay? Uh, here's the problem with that. And those of us who work in the health space understand this, okay? The average American consumes a majority of their calories from heavily processed foods. This is a fact. In fact, when you go to grocery stores, 73% of the calories in a grocery store, typical grocery <coughs> store, this is confirmed, comes from heavily processed foods. The average American, a majority of their diet is made up of heavily processed foods. When you look at the remaining whole natural foods, which is what we're always advocating for, I don't think anybody will say yeah. that a whole natural food diet- Meat, eggs, dairy. Is, it's meat, eggs, and dairy. Yeah. That's a majority. <laughs> They're not eating a lot of other whole natural foods. Yeah. It, that's pretty much it. So if you convince a bunch of everyday people who already don't plan their diets, who are already not health and fitness fans, the average person- Mm -hmm. and you just scare the hell out of them or you tax meat into oblivion or you ban meat and make it so people can't purchase it, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah. They're going to replace it They're with more deficient. of what they already eat a lot of, heavily processed foods. And what that will result in is a sicker population, a fatter population, a population with less muscle, with more anxiety, more depression as a result of nutrient deficiencies. Not a great trade so uh that's the reason why i'm bringing this up it's like, so i we, agree with you 100 percent on this my question i have for you though is do you subscribe to it being this big you know conspiracy to make people weaker and sicker or do you think it's it's less nefarious and it's just this is the easiest path to patenting food that we can make more money and control the food industry even more. Like where, what do you think? And I don't think that's a conspiracy. I think that's like the yeah. obvious path to yeah. me. I think that there's, there's a few different things at play. There's the, uh, the climate worshipers <clears throat> where they place the climate, right? Environment climate as. So I just, I think, those, value. I think to that point, I think those are just useful idiots. I think the agenda is still to make money and it's easy to, to, yes. to play to but that. But there's, there's, there's more than one thing that's making this happen. So that's one, right? One of them is- Cornering the market. People worship the climate. It's everything. Kill all the humans. Everything bends to this top value. Every other value is less than that. So if people are more sick, people have more anxiety, more depression, less innovative, et cetera, et cetera. Even people will even call humans a cancer uh, on earth is, is a common one. So that is part of it. Then you have- a lot of markets that profit off of people who are, who are not, quote unquote, balanced and healthy. Now, I don't necessarily think they sit down and say, we want people to be sick. But if you look at their products, their products are typically consumed by people who are less healthy or consumed more by people who are less healthy. So if you look at someone who's like, <coughs> think of someone who's fit and healthy and balanced, they're less likely to buy all these products consume as much of the same media, you know, basically do the same kind of stuff. So their incentives are in that direction. And then what you said, I think is a big one, which is uh, you can create lots of patented processed foods, GMO products, very profitable to do so. And if we need to sell it under the guise of- We're saving saves every, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, this is a, a value. It's great for everybody. It's good for the earth and therefore- Let's do it. Um, then, then they'll do so. So I think there's there's multi factors. Yeah. Tinfoil, I think, I think you, <clears throat> we we've seen like uh, a lot of examples of this in terms of like uh, low 
low fat, like in, in eliminating fat out of your diet and like, you know, other like focuses in terms of like which foods that we all need to focus on. I feel like this, it's, it's sort of a trends thing. Right. And so it starts out as like veganism is, um, I, I've seen like a big movement and push in that direction. I, I have, I've seen, uh, lately I've seen a lot of push back against it. And so you see like the carnivore kind of diet emerge. And then you see like people like swarming over to that. There was Atkins before. So I think that it, in terms of capturing the market and like capitalizing on that, I think that there was opportunity there now to like, we have the technology to make uh, this fake meat. And so like in order to get people to buy into it, we were going to force them in that direction. And so I think a lot of it is like now that, that there's more control over the way that consumers uh, get information and like, they, like, we all have the same information on our phone, but they can control that a lot more. And you've seen them manipulate, you know, algorithms and ways people like receive information. So the nefarious part for me is that it's like, you know, whether it's like trying to make a sick and all that kind of stuff. And it's like a real devious plot. Uh, I mean, you can go down that rabbit hole all you want, but I just think in terms of us having to uh, having access to information, like they can control a lot of the information we receive. And so to, to inform the consumers that this is the direction we need to go is an agenda that businesses have. Yeah. yeah I don't, I mean, I, uh, I don't, I don't think it's this crazy plot to make us sick. I think, I think that also just plays in the favor too of like, that, that plays into the, uh, you know, the medical industry. Oh yeah. That's a huge market. So it's like, or, yeah. uh, you're not, so you have the food and the medical industry, like two of the biggest industries that are out there. And so it's like, oh, okay, well, we're going to get it. We're going to push them over to processed foods. That'll probably make them more sick. Yeah. You'll probably make more money. Look so at they're not, partnering now with GLP. Right. And the, so, yeah. you know, so you got the, you got, you got the medical community is not going to push hard back on it because yeah. they're just going to send them more customers. You yeah, got the food I'm, industry. I'm, it's in their best interest to make more money. That's right. So I do think like your point about like the zero fat, like movement that we had in like the late nineties or whatever like that. I think that's the same thing. I think it was driven by the same thing. I don't think it was, even though it ended up making people sicker and unhealthier, like we saw this firsthand, right? How many times did you have a female client after training them and then realizing like, oh shit, she's eating under 20 grams of fat, all these issues that she's having, all I had to do is bump her fat to 80, 90 grams a day. And all of a sudden, all everything these, goes away. Everything goes away. Yeah. So we saw it firsthand how, what that started to do to people because they didn't know any better. <laughs> So I, I, I do think that, I think that was a result of it. I don't think that was a desired outcome. I think the desired outcome was, oh, let's create a new niche market of non-fat milk and fake butter and all this stuff like well, that. Well, look, I'll give you an example. Uh -huh. There was that study that showed, so when people get hospitalized for depression, it's pretty bad. Like you're, you're, you're pretty bad. They did a study where they had a group of, uh, they took groups of people who were hospitalized and they put them in rooms where the there was a window that faced uh, the east. Oh, I remember. So this. the rising sun would come and shine through the window. Yeah, they were in their they were hospitalized significantly less than people who weren't in <clears> rooms <throat> like that. Now, do you think it's in the best interest of these hospitals to build rooms that allow for more sunlight to come in with the rise? Do you think that that's in their best interest, or do you think it's in their best interest to have people stay a little longer? Yeah. Right. So I don't necessarily think people are like evil at the top, but the incentives don't move towards making people there's a, there's ethical healthy. issues there's definitely ethical issues that uh, you see like that and you're like no they wouldn't like somebody wouldn't like intentionally have those windows facing that way because they know that it'll keep them a little bit sick or but if you're looking at your bottom line and you're looking at um, the fact that a hospital is a business and like when they don't have patients, they're losing money all the time. And so, and two, with the whole COVID thing, it's like you see incentives for, for people to report things because it's <laughs> like, you know, you have to like make money at the end of the day in order to keep things afloat, pay your and employees and all that kind of stuff. So you're making these justifications unethical dust justifications a lot like sometimes it, it's going to happen well incentives matter look I'll, I'll paint the picture just so people because people are like oh people aren't evil i know people who work in the medical industry they're good people so do i i think they're i've met i've trained and worked with lots of doctors i have family members that are nurses they're all amazing people they all want to help people so i don't think that there's these evil whatever i'm sure there's some but i think a majority of them are are good people but imagine this scenario presented your uh, corporation you own these massive hospitals or you're uh, a medical organization that works with these hospitals. And a study comes out that says uh, sunlight, uh, if, you know, windows that face the east 
reduce hospitalization by this percentage. And then another study comes out that says taking this antidepressant at this time when people are hospitalized reduces hospitalizations. Which one do you think is going to get more attention? Yeah, the pill. Right. Which one is going to get more like uh, not just attention, but more adherence, more application? It, and it's not necessarily because people are um, nefarious. It's just that's what the incentives push you towards, right? So meat, uh, eating, and the studies are clear on this, very clear. Look at people who don't eat meat. Nutrient deficiencies are higher. Depression is higher. Anxiety is higher. Okay, this is a fact. It's a fact because of the lack of nutrient-dense foods. The nutrients that are present in meat are more easily absorbed. They're more bioavailable, and they're just, they're just higher. In order to make up for that with a non-animal product diet, you can do it. You can do it. We have modern, you know, markets. You can go to the grocery store and get all kinds of different things now, any time of the year, okay? But it takes a lot of planning. You got to be very careful. And even then, even then, I've worked with clients like this where they were meticulous about their vegan diets. Even then, they couldn't get certain nutrient levels where they needed. And they begrudgingly, I remember one woman in particular, I worked with her. She was a vegan for ethical reasons. She did not want animals to get hurt. So she was one of those vegans that's like, and those are the ones that tend to be consistent, right? They really, really truly believe like, I don't want animals to get hurt. And she, man, she planned everything out. She worked with a functional medicine practitioner and me. She hired me. She had all these symptoms of nutrient deficiencies and hormone issues. We bumped her calories. I had her try vegan protein shakes. Uh, it, it just, there were certain things that just weren't, weren't working. Okay. Her hair was still kind of falling out. Energy was still not so great. Nails and skin weren't so good. You know, functional medicine practitioners doing tests on her is like these nutrient levels still aren't coming up. She started taking supplements. The supplements helped a little bit, but they didn't help a lot. Um, some of them caused digestive issues. Finally, I mean, we had this, her and I had this conversation and I said, you know, you're doing everything right. It's just not working for your body. I know you want to help animals. I said, I think a healthy version of you is going to be more, effective than an unhealthy version. And you have to place yourself at the top. You can't be effective at helping anything if you're constantly sick and you don't feel good. And she was, I remember she was in, she was in tears. She gave in and she started by eating eggs. And the difference in her health was profound. It was so profound that I remember she would come in and she was, she was like one of those people that was like pro vegan, but also doesn't work for everybody. And you got to do this type of thing. Mm -hmm. It's just hard. And so if you take a bunch of everyday Americans who don't plan anything with diet yeah. and you remove the nutrient yeah, dense we're whole foods, problem if, yeah. holy cow, we're going to have all kinds of health and mental health issues and health issues. And yeah, the food industry will profit massively, massive. By the way, the lab grown meat, you know, what's beautiful about lab grown meat. You patent it. Mm -hmm. If my lab grows meat, I can <clears throat> make it. Yeah. That's, it, sal's ribeye. To whatever. me, that's the biggest, yeah. I think that's the, the biggest thing going on here is just that it, they're moving in that direction yeah. and it's it's in their best interest and so the the narrative's going to be around why you shouldn't and I you know it's I don't know it's this is the the challenge of free markets right that's yeah. it, in their best interest to make that money and put that message out only thing we can do is counter it with better information right yeah, yeah. so I mean you, the question yeah the, it's just our job to inform you know people. Well, here's why I point people just not to cut you off but I point people to this uh, there are ways of raising animals that are far more ethical. Uh, not like the conventional style. Um, you can uh, grass fed. It's more natural uh, with the beef. It's going to have better fatty acid profile. The animals are treated differently. Um, and thankfully, because of markets, yeah. you can now get it. And it used to be so expensive. Like Butcher Box, for example, look at the cost of the box of meat that you get. <clears throat> You're not spending more money. It's actually convenient. It's better. And you've got ethically raised like wild caught, fi wild -caught fish, grass fed beef, Heritage pork, you know where it's coming from. You, if you want, you can contact the company, figure this all out. I was going to bring it's up. Healthier. I was going to bring up Butcher Box. Do you know if they're like, are they campaigning against a message like this, or do they just ignore it? Yeah, do you that's know? an interesting question. That's yeah. a good question because it's like a direct shot across the bow yeah. at them, right? I mean, that's their business. I would now. almost, yeah, I would almost want to. And like, yeah, me too. I, I'm surprised. I don't think I've seen anything. At least I haven't heard anything from our end, like of them sending out stuff where they're like actually. Good question. I mean, you would think that they they would do that, or, or maybe at least a comparison, you know, and like right. so look at the value of the nutrients. 
nutrients and whatnot, you know. Or maybe there's to, enough to people or, that are subscribed and and that are are not even that are not even listening to that message that it doesn't it's not hurting them like that. But I would think that it would affect their business. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, I maybe heard. not yet, but maybe in the future. You know, my favorite part of this whole movement is: Have you seen? Yeah, people are, people are actually doing this. Have you seen these uh, vegan cat foods? Oh God, yeah, <laughs> dude, you're taking a carnivore. <laughs> they're not even. They're just like a carnivore. Yeah. And you're like, I'm gonna make you eat. You know, vegan this stuff. animal it's cruelty right poor there. Cat. Like, come on, man. They're not. Yeah, it's it's not benefiting these poor animals. Oh, at what, all. Is, what did that say right there, Doug? So, yeah, so we partner, this is Butcher Box, according to them. We partner with people who are dedicated to doing the right thing. Uh, so they always do 100% grass-fed, grass-finished, humanely raised, never given antibiotics or hormones. Um, so they do focus very seriously. So I, 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 I have a super naive question. What is the difference between like a grass-fed, and I should know this, right, because I was in the dairy and farm industry. What is the difference between like a grass-fed uh beef farm versus a regenerative is it the same thing is so if you are doing grass fed is it considered a regenerative farm or is, is they, there, they they're tip if, if they're typically uh yes but they're not always the same so you could can just you look that up for me doug i'm just yeah, curious they could just bring uh, um grass to the to the cows have a meat um I see. or regenerative is when they're using the land and cycling through and using all of the land using the manure to fertilize so they uh, sort of cycle where they eat yeah i think they move them from pasture, to pasture. no i know that about grass-fed beef that right. i'm familiar with that what i'm not familiar with is what constitutes it regenerative Look versus that, that. Oh, okay yeah. because i actually am not familiar with any situation where you bring grass to cows you wouldn't do that yeah you would I, you you would you would feed them silage and you would feed them cornmeal and stuff like that does that That's, incorporate more of the ecosystem of other animals and stuff to kind of like yeah because they, tra they trample through. the ground and they and they no that's what i've read that's yeah. what uh what's his name talked about rob wolf, rob wolf. Yeah. yeah look yeah. that up look up because what is regenerative farming? farming there's there's other animals that play a, a big role in that in order to like keep um a lot of the vegetation and stuff uh in the soil for instance from uh i just know it's sure become a real popular buzzword in, in that community and i mean i'm i came from an organic dairy so and we we moved the cattle like from pasture to pasture they were grass fed but we also uh they were able to grain finish those those cows but the, what i didn't know the difference is like okay what makes it regenerative versus non-regenerative if it's if you are going an all organic route you're going all grass fed would that just automatically fall in that category yeah, what does that say doug well i'm looking at this trying to get a an answer that's kind of clear uh but what they're saying is, is it really is just the ability to roam freely. Um, that's the main point that I'm seeing as far as that okay. is concerned. Yeah, I'm no, I mean, for sure, every time we do something like this, where we're not, none of us have a definitive answer, <sighs> I will get 50 DMs. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, I got it. Us, <laughs> no, no, get, no. A, get a legit so, farmer. Yeah, yeah. To, yeah. No, 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 I got it. I got it. It says us. regenerative agriculture. Oh, look at right there. Who's got this? Is that you, yeah. Andrew? Oh, okay, good. All right. So what, look at look at the, look at there's three here. So, so go to go to 100 regenerative grass fed beef. What does that say up there? Then, Can someone then, read that or so maybe right expand here that? On the top point it just says genuinely regenerated and 100 grass fed beef comes from animals that lived on pasture, foraging on nothing but grasses from birth to harvest. Okay. The true definition of grass fed and grass finished. Uh, well, look at the one on the right though. Right next to it is what is what's considered uh, grass fed, but not. So go go yeah, grass fed beef right here. A lot of fake grass fed beef is meant to mean genuine, regenerative, and 100% grass fed beef comes from animals that lived on pasture. But okay, but this is not always the case. Meant to have access to a pasture, but not always the case, and could be extremely limited. Many grass fed cattle are in refinement, but fed some grass. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. Like they literally throw it in their feed. I see. So I was actually reading from the Butcher Box page there. And, uh, you know, it says if you're buying grass fed beef, you're maybe not getting what you think you are. Typically grain fed or grass fed cattle start their lives on pasture, but are later confined to feedlots where their diets can include grains. Wow. So they can, so they can consider it still grass fed if mm -hmm. they started their life on that. And That's then, why it has to say grass fed. Okay. So grass fed, grass finished cattle, also known as hundred percent grass fed are free to roam on pasture for their entire lives. Not just when they're calves. Do you know what? So I, I always thought that mm -hmm. the, so the, the cutoff, I thought, I don't know. So like, this is more, more questions that would be, somebody else can answer better that if it was grass fed as long as they, they could do it all the way they had to do it all the way up to their final like two weeks before slaughter and then they would they would fatten them up by mm -hmm. and putting grain and silage and everything in their feed but they still were most of their lives i thought grass fed but from what that sounds like 
you don't even need to do that. They it's all the way through. There's yeah. a lot of trickery going yeah. on. Yeah, you can literally, you know, that's the shitty part about the, you know what I'm saying? And that's the argument the other side makes for this stuff. I don't think, is it two weeks out? I think it's longer than that. No, that's, I mean, that's what I, I in order to still like call. That, would that be enough time to change the fat in the Two animal? weeks of overeating? It would? Oh, yeah. With yeah. cows? With humans, too. Anybody. I mean, you- I mean, you, I've tried to bulk like that. That's you, sure. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have another Two gear, weeks. bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. They can, can handle a lot I of mean, food, you, I mean, you could- I remember scooping grain and silage to a cow. Like, they'll eat whatever you put in front of them. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. They'll, they'll, go, they'll continue to just eat. In fact, I can't remember, recall a time- Oh, well, if a cow, that's how you knew a cow was sick, right? So if you pour their, especially the grain and silage, which they love, you pour that in their in their trough, I mean, they suck it down. If they left something, you always tag that cow. Something's wrong with 487. You know, something's wrong with 519. Like, they didn't finish their, their wow. you just know. Like, Did you they, help them uh, produce, like, calf? Like, how do you, do you have, what, what do you have, one bull for how many cows? How did that work? One. One bull, and then that was, I mean, we only had for a how many cows? We only had a, we only had a herd of 150. 50 something one bowl so we for 150 small. cows yeah 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 well they so so <laughs> they, you remember that the heifers only come in they only come in heat they, they're just they come in heat at different times so let's say you have like 15 in heat you see the signs that they're in heat then you move what them are the in signs uh i don't remember what uh i didn't this is not a part that i did a lot of like i i, I had they stand I've, different <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I mean, honestly, I, I think I remember you seeing like like blood and stuff coming. coming oh, wow. yeah, yeah, yeah. You would see, you would, yeah, mm -hmm. like discharge and stuff uh -huh. like that. If I recall, like, I don't, and then what do you what do you do? You just bring the bull in. He knows what to do. Yeah, yeah. Saying. You just you you just pasture them off in the in the same area. He's normally kind of hanging out by himself, but then when they're in heat, you move them in where they're in heat, and he'll go around and he'll 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 it fuck is, them all. Huh? Yeah, yeah. He'll he'll take it. I mean, it's a real quick action. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like. You don't even realize, like, really? Well, he's just, got 150, you know. Yeah. He ain't yeah. trying to take his time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and wow. It, yeah, that's an interesting question, too. I never, I never thought to ask, like, what is the ratio? Like, there's got to be a point where you get more, where you want more, more. But we had, we were a small dairy. We only had 100, 130 to 150 cattle. I didn't know that, but there's still one bull for that many? Holy Toledo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wow. That's a good, I, I've never hmm. thought about what the number, there's got to be a cutoff, though. Like, once you get to a certain amount, you would want a yeah, second. Yeah, the bull's just like, dude, yeah, relax. Yeah, I would. I would you ever have it. ideas of like, I, so when I was in Scotland, they had these like uh, um, cows that, would they had these longhorn cows that were like super oh, sweet. Yeah. Oh, man, I was like, I could totally like own a few of those guys. Oh, you they're know? huge. Yeah. The horns are huge. They actually have mini versions of them now. That's I saw. cute. Yeah, yeah, it was ridiculous. I, so look what it says. So I was right. It was so Signs of heat standing to be mounted, mounting other cows. Wow. So yeah, you'll see the so heifer. So cow will do it to no, other yeah, cows? Yeah, you'll see yeah, other heifer, just like you see with dogs, right? Male, two male dogs or two, you'll see them uh, mounting well, each other. Well, those are heat and cattle, not the bulls. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. Oh, okay. Same thing. You see the same sex of a dog. If, if they're yeah, in heat, yeah. they start doing, they start acting. But the big one is the mucus discharge. You'd see this mucus discharge uh -huh. and it'll have a little bit of blood in it and you would know. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Okay, it's time. Bellowing. Okay, so they are like, yeah, doing same. that thing. I know. Yeah. Wow, that's wild. <laughs> Today's program giveaway maps power lift. Here's how you can win it. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we post it. Uh, also, subscribe to this channel and then turn on your notifications. If you win, you'll get MAPS Power Lift. We also have a sale going on right now. MAPS Old Time Strength, half off. MAPS Obstacle Course Racing, also half off. If you're interested, do this. Click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. So how was the... Because uh, um, we started late today because you were... You, you, you drove... Far Sac to go to the game. Uh huh. I went to the game last Who night. played? What a crazy Sacramento Kings versus the Warriors. And, what and, and who a won? Crazy in Sacramento, bro. It was such a crazy night altogether. Um. So for yeah, you've heard me guys. I don't, and I'm not gonna bust them out completely on the podcast. But you, I've off air. I've talked to you guys. I have a I have a buddy who uh, we all go back like to shit when we we're 13, 14 years old, right? So we we go way back and. He is the one who got injured and had this windfall of money. So he was, oh, like yeah, he was, okay, in, he was in his thirties, yeah. still living with his dad. Oh, I told yeah. you guys this. Mm -hmm. And yep, then yep. got, got a lawsuit, had a windfall of millions of dollars and stuff like that. And as we've gotten older, we've kind of drifted apart, even though, you know, it's like, and I'm sure you guys have this guys that you were really close to when you're young, 
you still are friends, but maybe as you get older, you realize like, okay, we have less in common now. And so we see less and less of each other, but we still, usually kinda, that's because they can, they still act like they did when you were kids. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's definitely him. Like okay. he's still like that. And he's like a little bit of embarrassing and obnoxious and everything like that. Well, anyways, <laughs> hope he <doesn't> listen <laughs> okay, here we go. Yeah. What happened? If he, hey, if he does, he deserves to hear this anyways. Cause he was so, I'm with now my other best friend who I tell you guys about that Justin, who I do all kinds of stuff with yeah. and his wife is great friends of mine. And um, he, him and I He's are your third best friend. Yeah, exactly. Besides, we're, yeah. Uh, we're all, we're Justin all, <laughs> I know people probably get it confused because I have a, 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 I have another, Sorry, I know him. He's cool. Close, yeah. close buddy. Only right? one side. Another cool Justin. So he introduces me to this guy, like uh, a, a his neighbor in where he lives over in Lodi. And this guy, uh, first time I meet him, like maybe a month ago, we hit it off. Super cool guy. Very successful dude. He started up those care homes. Oh, and yeah. uh, we're, all, we're all big basketball fans, but he's a Kings fan. And so we're all, you know, we're talking Missing track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And having a good time. And he's like, he's like, hey, we should all catch a game. I said, yeah, I would love to. Well, long story short, this dude offers up, he literally gets all of us tickets for us and our wives to go to the game, right? And I'm like, I you can't. You guys are doing the, not I, the cheap tickets. Yeah, yeah. This is where we're sitting in like great seats, right? And I go, <clears throat> oh man, I can't. It was a, that nice of a gesture. I was like, I can't accept that. I was like, let me I barely know the guy, right? Let me let me at least take care of mine and my wife's tickets. Said, no, absolutely no. He's like real nice guy. Like just totally refused me. Wouldn't let me do anything. So, anyways, we go. Incredible game last night. So it's off. It's off. It's like incredible. It's an intern in season tournament game. And out of the blue, my buddy, who we don't really talk to very much, we're on this little thread. And every once in a while, it, it pops in and and whatever he he'll say something, and. My other, my other buddy, stay with me here, Justin, okay, is like, I don't, I remove myself from that thread because I can't stand him anymore. I don't want to talk to mm. him. And he doesn't know that because I don't know if you know this, but when someone pulls himself out of like an, an iPhone thread, you'll still see their name up there. You can there. mute it. Yeah. And yeah. so he sees nothing that that guy sees, uh, but he thinks he's still on that thread. So he's like having these conversations sometimes. And I know it because I'm in it still. <laughs> yeah. And so he messages him, yo, JP, Justin, hey, man. Right? he's yeah. like, going to the Kings game, you want to go with me? Because they live over there. I don't mm -hmm. live over there. So he doesn't even, I'm like, oh, that's crazy. I'm like, we're actually going to be there. Justin's neighbor hooked us up with some tickets. Oh, where are you sitting at? Where are you going to be at? I'm going to be courtside. Where are you guys at? And so he was making this big, and I'm like, fuck. No, at I'm, this point, we're like, I should have said nothing. Yeah, but then I'm like, I'm going to run into this fool. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and then it'll be worse if I like, sure. like we're you know, again, we're, we go back to high school. So anyways, I tell him where we're going and, and where, and I find out where the seats are at. So he does some stuff to move around. Now, we warned this guy that we, I just met and it's Justin's neighbor. Like, Hey, we're going to run into one of our friends. Like, please. It's not a representation. <laughs> Always not, like that. No, <laughs> I, I had to have that. I literally had to talk cause I barely know this guy. This guy's really nice. I said, I just want you to know, like yeah. we're probably going to run into Justin and I's buddy from high like school. Everybody's got that one friend. Yes. Like that. You got to warn everybody. You do have to and it's, this yeah. is a new like relationship that I'm like building with this new guy. Right. <laughs> so I'm like, Hey, this dude is not a representation of anybody else that would hang with me today. Like this is just, just so you know. And, and so we're kind of giving him that warning. So, my, and my buddy, because he came in, he he was living at home with his dad until he was thirty something years old, and he was kind of going nowhere for a for a long time. He was that, and that was part of why we all drifted apart. The rest of our friends all went off to college or made something themselves and did something. He stayed in our hometown, fucking around, getting drunk at local bars, doing mm -hmm. nothing. Right. He ends up getting this massive lawsuit, and so now he's that same guy, just a ton of money. And somebody who gets that like that, the insecurities around it are crazy. It's like they got to they gotta prove that they like they made it, even though they didn't make yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? And so he finds out where we're at and he gets the 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 uh, front row seats. So we're in the, like we're in the third row, which are really nice seats. All right. It's still considered court side where we're at. And he gets the court. I mean, these are the seat and it's right. So there's two feet are on the floor. Yeah. He's yeah. on the floor and he's by this on the bed. 100% right wouldn't have gone it had he not known you were 100%. Yeah. Like I, he's never sat there. I know he has it. And on top on, of it, guy. he buys it because he doesn't want to go by himself. So he buys a ticket to this dude I've never met. He's a fucking stranger. When I ask him about him, he's like, oh, it's my my Baccarat buddy. Baccarat buddy? The fuck, you play Baccarat? You <laughs> <laughs> met some dude gambling, buys this dude. See, and all of it is to like show up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My buddy. He starts getting drunk. He starts being obnoxious, acting like he owns the place. And it's like whole time like. And he's, we're real close. And so he's leaning back talking and all the people around us are looking at me and I'm telling like the people that worked, like, I don't know who the fuck this guy is. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't, I don't want to be associated with him. And so, so he continues to act like an asshole and sure as shit, dude, 
this is okay. So if you watch the game, those that watch the game will understand like how crazy funny this is. So quarters one through three, Warriors are dominating. I mean, we were up 15 to 20 points the entire game. Mm-hmm. My buddy, who's the Kings fan who brought us, I feel bad for him. He brought us all these tickets and like, we're just thumping them. The game's going to, but I'm like, man, this is crazy. So my dumb friend who's in the front row gets ejected. They throw him out of the, the fucking, the guy's He's kept, sitting on the floor on the court. and he gets kicked out. What did gets, he do? Just talking to the players, uh, talking to the people, uh, just yeah. being an idiot. Bro, hold on real quick. And saying How dumb, much of those tickets cost on the floor? 13,000 for that. <laughs> he got ejected <laughs> on 13, out of $13,000. And, and, and bought the guy next to him and got ejected in the third quarter when the game, and the Kings come make the craziest comeback I'd ever seen with a buzzer beater one point win. It was one of the most epic games. It sucked for me because we lost. Yeah. But one of the most epic wow. games I'd ever seen live happen. No and way. so he gets thrown out. The story gets crazier. So like I go down. I Wait, actually, he's out and it gets worse? No, no. Well, it get, the story gets crazier, right? So the other part was almost getting into it with Nate Diaz, right? So wait, I go, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> UFC Nate Diaz. So I go down. What? So Yeah, yeah. So I'm in the lounge area. It's, it's, that's a little bit of a, a stretch. That didn't really okay. kind of happen. But he was there. And what happened to me and how I found out he was there. <laughs> so I go to the I, – I break off at like uh, mid-fourth quarter uh, to go to the restroom. And uh, at this point, the game's going. So there's like hardly anybody in this lounge area. And there's like a group of like four or five people, like four four dudes and three or four girls that are just like in this Lexus lounge area, private area. They're drinking, and I don't pay no attention. I'm like beeline straight to the restroom because I gotta go. And I go to the restroom, and when I come out, I swing the door and slam into this dude. And this dude kind of turns around, mean mugs me, and then we're like walking. Him. Oh, I touched him. I'm sorry, bro. Like it wasn't a big deal. And as I come out. He's f- he's with Nate and all these guys. Oh, and they're all like, his crew. Oh, yeah. so his crew. <laughs> I hit one of his, yeah, yeah, I hit one of his boys. I didn't know who uh, he was, right? And then yeah. I, but I still said I'm sorry. Like I come, yeah. Ball, yeah, yeah. I was in a hurry, right? So I come yeah. whack and hit him in the side and kind of threw him it's off. It's always and, that guy though, right? The yeah, and, and like, of course he, he I'm with yeah, Nate and I was being a nice guy yeah. about it. I was like, oh man, I grabbed him. I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry. And he just kind of give me this mean look, and then we, we I followed him out of the bathroom. He's still dogging me and stuff like that. And then I see he stands right next to Nate. I'm like, oh yeah, great. This is. Oh, would be cool. my luck, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the dude that wants to fight me is fucking Nate's boy, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, uh, I end up, I just, I walk out, I get out of there. I'm not trying to fucking start nothing. So nothing happened with them. That was, that was a stretch to say something <laughs> yeah, like that. Funny. But this, the game was incredible. The scene of my buddy get thrown out of the game was. Did he was, say anything? Has he said anything to you? Today? Oh, like, dude, hey, I'm I, sorry. After the after the show, I'll show you guys the thread of the conversation. That, is he apologizing? Does he know he acted like an no, asshole? No, 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 no. This is the uh, friend I told you. God, who, I hate that. I who is also a pathological liar. So he tells like outlandish, crazy stories. So the thread that I have of the the text messages of when I got out of the game, it was him telling me how he told the Kings how they're going to give me three more games for free or else I'll never come back. My lawyers are coming after and going to sue the, sue the arena. Get the f- <laughs> yeah, bro. Wait till uh, I let you go. It's too long to read painful. on the, it's yeah. too long to read on the podcast, but I'll let you guys read it afterwards of the conversation that he was having basically with himself. It's everybody else's And fault. you still call him a friend. I mean, it's like one of those guys. I feel like I mean, I don't know if you guys have. You're somebody. loyal to him. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah There's so, a loyalty there. So, to, to, so the audience understands why I would even allow his his mom was like, um, he's an adopted kid, and his mom is was like another mom to me, and she died of brain cancer when we were in high school. Mm-hmm. And I and I also when I moved into this new town, he was one of the first kids that befriended me. So you got loyalty to him. So exactly. So I, I have I, I have this. That. So his his that. mom was like another mom to me. He befriended me when I was a new kid in town. We, you know, so we were, we were tight. We were really tight when we were growing up and we just, we outgrew each other and went different directions. And he kind of just, like I said, he didn't really become a pathological liar until after we got older. Yeah. And then it was like, and, and if you've ever met someone who's like a true pathologist, you can't call them on it. They're so good at it. Like he's so good that he, when he tells stories, like he, he inserts truth. Mm-hmm. And so, and there are always things that you can get out of that you can't prove. Like he told us when we got there, he's, he told me how him and Clay were in the elevator together, and he was telling Clay, "Oh man, great game," and tell him who he was and all this stuff like that. And it's like I can't prove that it was just <laughs> him, and, there. just him and Clay, right? So nobody can prove, <laughs> nobody can prove that he was hanging out with Clay in the elevator, talking to him on the way yeah. the, on the way to the game. Mm-hmm. It's like, but and but you do know what I do know is that the players stayed at the same hotel that he was at. So there's a possibility. Possibly, yeah, yeah it's, and it's always mm-hmm. like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. When they're really good at lying like that, they'll they always have these like hints of I had I, ha- I have a friend, hmm. I'll say friend, uh, that uh was like that, where he would not like that, but I, I stopped hanging out with him because when we'd go out, 
if he had a one or two drinks, he would always start a fight. Yeah. Always yeah. would start a fight. Yeah. And you know, when you're when you're a kid, like the first time it happens, it's exciting it's exciting. And you yeah. you yourself are probably a bit of an asshole because you're a teenage, you know, whatever. <laughs> But then after the second or third time, like, I don't want to go out with you, bro. Every time we go out, you start something. It's terrible. It ruins the night. And you're just angry. Yeah. So, I, you know, you know they I used to be out. a little bit naive, too. I was like, oh, they're going to mature. Yeah. 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 Like, that, no. eventually, right? That's and, how I felt, too. And like, then, waiting for them. Yeah. And then you just, I, I guess the only move for me was, I had the same issue, though. I had a lot of friends like that that was like, I'm loyal to them. Like, I, I, we've been through, like serious shit together and like i know their families and it goes deep you yeah. know but at the same time you're like but you haven't changed your behaviors like yeah. that sucks I, dude i got some heartbreak around a story like that it was i when the first one of the first clubs i ever ran there was an agm there that worked for me and he had kind of a bad reputation but i took him under my wing and i wanted to train develop him and he was definitely working hard and really doing a good job while i was there and when i left i you know, really put in a lot of good words for him. And at the time he was performing well to take over as the manager of that club, which he'd never gotten before. And it was a big deal for him. Yeah, He becomes the manager and slowly like declines into some of his old habits where he'd show up to work late, drunk, doing drugs. These are the rumors I was hearing. I get on the phone with him. Like, what's going on, dude? This is your best, best opportunity. Like, why would you throw this away? Anyway, long story short, he lost that. And I still would talk to him. And uh, he cut me, he like ignored me for a while. And then I get a phone call from him. After a while, he ignored me, he calls me. And he calls me to bail him out of jail. Oh, um, man. And, and so I did, but I knew like, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bail you out. I know you have a family. Yeah. yeah. And I care about you. Yeah. But after I give you this money, I'm never going to talk to you again. Oh, wow. And that's exactly what I did. Because oh, I had to create that, you know, that bound. And I did, I bailed him out and then that was it. And then- right. A couple of years later, he tried to get in contact with me, but at that point, I'm like, you wrote it off. Yeah, it's like I'm not gonna. No, it's you know, but it's heartbreaking. You know, you know it all. It reminds yeah. you know, uh, you you tell the um your evolutionary theory around uh, why us men like pick on each other and sure. stuff, right? To see, are you gonna hang? Are you? Yeah. And like, I 100 percent grew up in a group of guys like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. But once we all got to, if we still are friends, and now that we're in our 40s or whatever like yeah. that. It's like everyone, most everyone has grown beyond that, right? Yeah. You don't need to challenge me anymore. For 20 years I've been around. You know I got your back. <laughs> yeah. We've already been in 50 fights right. together. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, else I got to prove Yeah, there's nothing point. to prove anymore, so we should all be like that. He still has that in him, and now it's like it's meaner and it's, uglier. It's, it's more mean-spirited. Yeah, it's more. I know, I know that. It's more yeah. mean-spirited. And so that the reason why my other buddy, so if he ends up hearing this, he'll know why. This, uh, th my other buddy, Justin, who stopped talking to him and pulled himself out of the thread, bro, he started to like – talk shit about him being a father and like like tell him oh that, you don't touch that oh yeah tell no, him no, he's not a, he's tell him he's a he's a, a pussy husband and he's Ooh, just like these are things you don't touch yeah, oh, yeah. And, no. and you know coming from a guy who's not a father it's like dude what are you doing like you don't you don't say that to a friend to no. like you don't say that to another i wouldn't say that to somebody i don't like yeah you know what i'm saying much less to somebody who you like and it's like i don't even know if he realizes like how mean-spirited that is and it's like bro we're 40 years old like yeah no, i don't want that in my life either is my buddy and so, so that's why he removed himself because he can get like that isn't that he, interesting there's mm -hmm. a there is a certain uh ability to be able to discern what is genuinely mean and what is just we're fucking with each other and i think some 100%. people don't know how to discern that like you ever have that buddy i have a friend like yep. this yep. who i have somebody that's like this in the group i hang out with <sighs> Where we all talk shit to each other, but everybody can discern. Yeah, and then he takes it too far. Yeah, and everybody, it's like obvious to everybody else. Yeah, like, it's awkward. That, yeah, you went too far. Like yeah. that's not. Yeah, you don't but say he that. can't. I don't think he <laughs> understands how to discern between like friendly shit talk. Yeah, and like oh, you just that, that's not that crossed the line a little bit, and that's not really cool. Yeah, you know? and the, uh, it's so funny because I had a friend like that, and. I was still friends with that guy, right? And it, it, meanwhile, I'd kind of float around to other groups of friends and they'd be like, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to invite so-and-so to come hang out. They're like, really? You know, and they get all like <laughs> uncomfortable. And, and I, later on, I figured out like, yeah, he's really hard to like deal with because yeah. he'll be that guy that'll like launch an insult that's like, is this funny or is this just really mean? You know, you know? how you know the difference? <clears throat> this is how I, you can always tell. They can dish it out. They cross they the line. They can't take it. They can't yeah. take it. It's always yeah. that. The guy that can't take what he dishes out, yes. that's a red flag. This dude's 100%. insecure and yeah. he's not. Because yeah. if you're going to give it to me and you're yeah. going to cross some lines, 
then you're going to get it back. And if you can't take it back, well, then this is what I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm actually out. having this conversation a lot with uh, Ethan because he's, he's in that, that phase right now where a lot of his friends, they're they, figuring this they're, out. they're doing that, yeah. you know, and they're all kind of like the pecking order thing. And then one's gone off with this group of friends. The other ones have gone this way. He's kind of over here and with, you know, this, this new kind of group of friends. And so, you know, it's just like, being able to identify that and like if it's mean spirit or if it's like it's it's true just like they're just you know jabbing at you I, to joke i i will not do to somebody else uh that something that i can't take back yeah like, right. i will not because i one thing i cannot take is like don't don't poke at me for being a father or being a husband things that i get i can be sensitive about i would never do that to someone else right if i did i better be okay that's right with you hitting me back. That's right. And that's, you know, that's. And there's also, I mean, there's, there's always like a, I feel like there's a, a time and a place. Like there's like, you know, when there's an o o opening where one of you said something, I'm like, oh, I'm going to get Justin yeah, yeah, here. You yeah, know, yeah, or I'm yeah. going to get, like, it's like you set it up. It's funny. It's like, and it was just, and then we move on from yeah. it. But like when you get someone like this, who's like mean spirited, it's like you, you wedge in a place to be mean and rude. When it doesn't even belong there. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he'll, he'll be like talking down about somebody else or something like that and then find a way to like pull you in as and put you down with that it's just like <laughs> yeah. why am i standing here listening to you i have a, I have a buddy <laughs> why am i getting berated yeah, yeah, dude. <laughs> i mean you, katrina you, katrina you apologized people, yeah. to me on the way home she goes you know i'm really sorry i said why and she goes well i know you so well and she goes uh i i heard your tone of your voice and she goes, and the hair stood up on my neck. And I know when you, you don't get like that, uh, I should just pull you out of that situation. And I left you in there. She goes, I'm sorry that I didn't come. And she's, because she, I can rely on her to be like that. Oh, honey, we have to go. Come save the situation. Yeah, yeah. Like she's, she's really got good the, at reading. Yeah. You know what, by the way, that's a good, you know why that's yeah. a good woman? Because uh, a man will get stuck in a situation and will not leave because it, it can make him appear to be less manly. Mm -hmm. It can make him feel that way. Or you just are not aware enough. A good woman will know. I'm gonna step in and help. Yeah, her. and she and she's she's like solid for that. Like normally yeah. spot on. She yeah. catch she can she can read my body language, the yeah. way I'm responding, and she'll normally come over and make something up, right? Like, yeah. oh honey, we have yeah, to go do right. this, or oh yeah. so and so want, needs you to call them, or like she'll do something where mm -hmm. it pulls me out. I don't have to I don't have to be the person who's just like, hey bro, don't want to talk yeah. to you and walk away. And she's like, I totally. She goes, I was into my thing. I heard you. My hair stood yeah. up. I should have said something. I, I got didn't. a buddy like that where I'll say something like, Oh, you know, this happened in, in on the business or whatever. And then his way of talking shit is like, Oh, anybody could do a social media business. Like, like, <laughs> 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 just like that's not even a good way. First of all, you're not talking shit properly. That's not really good. And number two, it's super not true, and it just makes you look stupid. You know, yeah. Yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, I love, I love a good uh, razzing or jab. Oh my god, it's my like, favorite. Yeah, like if people I mean, listen to us off air, they'd be like, "Wow, these guys." Are if it's <laughs> clever and it's yeah. cheeky, well, you know like, what I'm saying? Like cheeky versus just like, oh, I want to fucking insult you and like yeah, hit you. Like, well, how many times have we talked? We've. This is a funny thing for the audience to have get, get some <laughs> wow. inside, inside perspective. Like, so we all like are like that with each other, right? So when we meet people. You know, they uh, just because like, we are that way, right? And we don't know them. We don't have this relationship, and so and you get these, you get these these people that listen to the show sometimes. Oh, they jump in. Yeah, they yeah. jump in, and they I don't know and, you. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah. and they want to they want to get a part of that, and so they'll just come in insulting one of us. <laughs> and some people have good delivery, and some people don't have some really good delivery. Have terrible and delivery. And yeah, we don't have rapport, man. So. Yeah, and so we've had to learn to like, you know what? Like, if someone's like on our social media or meeting us in person, just assume that they're good yeah, hearted yeah, yeah. and they mean well yeah. because some people suck at that delivery and just like oh it's like actually lifted weights yeah. you know, like, <laughs> yeah. they'll say something yeah. you're like what like, yeah. like, that's the first thing they say yeah. you know? <laughs> I'm like hey come on now but I know it's our own fault because we yeah, put we off set that, ourselves up we put that. that energy off you know what you should have done when your friend was uh, was acting that way is you should you should have given him some uh, some some Organifi gold juice to get him just to chill out. <laughs> <laughs> Bring those stress. Great commer <laughs> good commercial break right there. Hey, do you have a... Sal like uh, like was wondering how he's going to shoot. Yeah, yeah, how am I going to shoehorn an Organifi hey, commercial hey. in here? <laughs> listen, nine out of ten times they work. Calms the asshole down. Yeah, listen, uh, do you have, a, right do you have a friend that just won't chill the fuck out? Yeah. <laughs> Organifi gold juice. Or Organifi gold juice. I think juice. that's a brilliant commercial. Relax I wish we could do system. more fun commercials like that. That'd be, yeah. That would be yeah. funny. Hey, I speaking think, of the gold juice that... The, the pumpkin spice gold juice. Oh my God, bro. 
with almond juice, macadamia nut. Do you slip into your Uggs when you make that? Oh, I want uh, to. Do you slip into your Uggs? I want to. I should have. Dude, I've I've created a nice little like, oh man, it's such like a, a little nook uh, in terms of like, it's just, it was so comfortable. I passed out when I got home uh, with the tree and then the fireplace and then oh. the, the bean bag. And I just, uh, I don't ever sit in that bean bag. I, and I, it's like, I you cannot like okay. get up. So this you're is stuck there. Unofficial. This is not Organifi promoting this, but I am going to say this. <laughs> You take the gold juice. You get some almond milk or some macadamia milk or whole milk if you can have dairy. You froth it up. Throw a little bit, a little bit of rum. Unbelievable. <laughs> Un. Pretty sure that's not what they intended. They don't. They don't. I feel don't like we're getting a that. call from Drew right yeah. now. Uh, yeah. hey, hey, what are you guys doing? Hey, yeah, maybe today. not bring up alcohol with yeah. our health products. Yeah. <laughs> it's got pro liver health compounds in I there, mean, so it's it nice to have you, that flavor like available for that. For speaking sure. to, that. speaking about your life, are you uh, are you still building your man cave or did you finish it? What are you, where are you at? With I'm it? still I'm still kind of adding. Well, here's the thing. Like, uh, and, and we're talking about teasing and whatnot, like Courtney and I have had this kind of relationship too, where like, um, she's worried that I'm going to be like cluttering it, you know? And I'm like, no, I'm trying to like add all these things. So I'm trying to like reorganize my thoughts with it, get it, get somebody's to help me sort of like structure it better. Yeah. Cause I was getting, going a little ham. You know, like I was like buying all these cool things and like trying to make it work. And, and she's like, maybe you want to step back and kind of like, <laughs> it's like the nice, nice wife you know, way to say this. Yeah. Is like, take, a, take a look at uh, what you're and, and I get it too. And she was not trying to be mean about it. She was just trying to get me to kind of like, Oh, so I've, I've been reassessing it. It's, it's pretty much there. It's just like, it needs, it needs like organization. I could send a picture. Yeah, yeah, I'd love yeah, to see yeah, that. yeah, for sure. Hey, we got to say this before we run out of time. We have to bring this up. <laughs> what, what? Tucker Carlson on X did a segment on, what's that new act that they passed? The UAE? UAE, yeah, okay. UAE. They're going to be releasing information that the government has, or they're trying to, on UFOs. I did not know this. There are 10 whistleblowers that were deep in these federal agencies that have come forward and under oath have literally said, Yes, these are extraterrestrial uh, aircraft. No, they're not made from any government that we know of. Yes, we are in contact, and we have been in contact with extraterrestrial beings. We did capture some bodies. Like, this is real. This is the real deal. So they passed this act, which is like, you got to release this information. There were politicians who are ready to get the information. Deep agencies stepped forward and literally said, nope, you're not getting it. And so they went to the media and said, yeah. why can't we get this yeah. This is all happening. All people in Congress, everybody was like, "Oh yeah, let's start like diving into this." And this then is, got this is re this is all real. Now I'm not saying that they're telling the truth. So the, okay, this is this. Here's my tinfoil hat yeah. coming on here, bro. Yeah. This is, I, you know what scares me the most about this is that that there's something else that is crazier than fucking aliens <laughs> that we need aliens to distract all of us. Yeah. That's the thing that scares the fuck out of me. Is that why now? If it is true, why? Like, why at this moment in time, which is a kind of a weird time right now, coming into another election I tell year, you, man, coming I have into twenty twenty four economy being crazy. Like, yeah, I did not have this on there. This is this is weird to me, and weird timing even more so. And so, what else the fuck is going on? Well, right now? the whistleblowers have come out. This is, has been in the. I, I thought the same thing. Did you hear about what? By the way, too speaking of, like since if the, here's one that could go call. Did you hear about the Pentagon again and their budget? Their, yeah. They failed, failed the sixth time. Yeah. Audit. Audit. Yes. Come on, bro. They failed 50% on, unaccounted bro. for assets. Come on. Come like, I mean, how, you, the, how can people just not get like infuriated? Can just, so can, 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 can't that make you feel like, okay, that's a great way to distract everybody right now. Oh, aliens. Or wait, wait, don't, don't worry about the trillions of dollars. <laughs> well, that's that we're, part of it though. They're like, we want to investigate where all this money's going. Yeah. Yeah. You and know, like, saying, let, let's trace all this money. Like, we need transparency for the American now, people. Tucker Carlson is like, why won't they reveal this? And the common theory is they don't want to cause a panic. And he goes, <laughs> bullshit. Mean, it's bullshit. bullshit. He goes, look, that's at, they love look how they use the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. You they know, love like, scaring on, us. They and love so scaring he the said, shit That's why it doesn't make sense. He said, maybe yeah. it's because they don't want us to know that they've got technology that they've been using. Maybe it's because there's other reasons that are right. worse. Like, like they've know. made deals. That was the thing. Is like, have they, have they made deals with these like extraterrestrials that we don't so, know about? Along those lines, have you guys seen the video? Do you guys rem remember Malaysia Air? I don't remember what it was. Yes. It was the that jetliner. There was a documentary. It was Netflix, I think. That yeah, had the one that, that disappeared. It. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's videos. You ready for this? Okay. There's videos 
both actual video and thermal video of the plane itself flying. Yep. Surrounded by orbs going around. Three it, of them. Like, going around sh it. Okay. There's a few videos and it vanishes. Literally disappears. It looks just like a Hollywood movie where it just like poof. And now, now here's the thing. There, I forgot who it was. There's, there's people that are, there's a person or a group that's coming out that is now offered over, a, I think the, the amount is, keeps going up, but I think at the moment it's $150,000 to anybody who can prove that these videos are fake. Oh, really? So they're putting money out and saying, prove to me. Well, because they haven't found any remains. Because they Still, thought the it people. crashed, Bro, but they didn't find any remains of it. Thermal video. It's flying orbs. Yeah, didn't, they find, didn't they find parts of the plane and everything washed yeah, up on a beach? But then it got island? disproved. Yeah, because no, it, it was like they were like. Oh, it wasn't. Yeah. Yeah, they were parts from another plane. Doug, pull up the Malaysia air surrounded by orbs. It literally just What year was that? What year was that? Oh, I don't know. It was a couple years ago. It's been well, a while. More than that. More, really? way, way longer. Yeah, it's been, it's well, been that's long. when the documentary came out. But Yeah, bro. Come on. It's crazy. I don't know. And they're offering money to prove that those are fake videos, and nobody's coming forward. I don't know why everybody's looking over here. I'm trying to figure out what's going on over there. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, I know. Speaking of the Pentagon, uh, you know, this time, this is old, right? But- when you when you really think about it, I'm going to throw another. I don't know. We'll see if this episode gets flagged. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Pentagon is not a very tall building. It's a wide building. It's massive. It has to be the most, if one of the most, if not the most surveyed buildings in the world. It's uh -huh. the Pentagon. Yeah. A pilot, or should I say, a passenger, who learned how to fly a single engine Cessna who on the report was a, such a terrible pilot that the guys didn't want to even pass him, hijacks a 747, figures out how to maneuver it with maneuvers that not even the best fighter pilots said that they could probably do, hits the side of the building, basically hovering over the ground, which is 747, good luck doing that. Mm -hmm. And we have no video evidence because they confiscated all the videos. That's what, that's what happened on September 11th. That's literally what happened at the Pentagon. There, there were like uh, people that uh, went on camera to uh, the eyewitnesses, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. So weird. Who knows, you know, what, yeah. what the deal is, but what are they? Obviously they're hiding something. Obviously something is, is going on. So who knows? Well, just speaking of the Pentagon. Yeah. <laughs> you're really going to get us flat. <laughs> we just threw that on top. <laughs> no, <my God>. Little <laughs> cherry on top. Yeah. You can't uh, find the orb video, Doug. I got, it. well, I got, I got a cool, uh, well, I guess it's kind of scary, but also cool. Um, oh, thing. there it is. Hold on. Look at this. To look bring this. up. Look at this video. Oh, Doug, you're not a member of TikTok. You can't get on. <laughs> All right, we'll look at it as we. But anyways, there's a scientist in Russia. So you guys know about the permafrost, right? Oh, we okay. Do. Hold oh, on. Let's watch. This. I love this. It's always the music when something's weird, isn't it? Do, do, yeah, it's always that. Do. So this is satellite image. Okay. Oh, wow. Look so, at those little. Yeah, so yeah. there's the orbs circling oh, wow. around it, just spinning around it, and then all of a sudden, it literally just pops out of existence like what are those dude watch ready and Who's, boom and, gone so that's a satellite that took those? that's a satellite image why did they put an emoji there that's really annoying just that yeah i guess just this is tiktok yeah off, all right TikTok. all right go ahead justin what do you Anyways, got the, the this, permafrost what yeah the permafrost so it's been thawing out and they've been getting um uh, mammoth bones and all that kind of stuff well I guess like there's one part of the, the permafrost that goes really deep. And so they were like uh, investigating it and, and actually they found like at the deepest part, this bacteria uh, that was, I don't know, like six point something million years old, I guess they uh, assumed that was still alive. And so being scientists like, Hey, let's, let's like test this bacteria. And so, they injected it in mice and plants, and apparently they um, had, like, tremendous longevity in terms of health and, and prosperity and all this stuff. Like, And so... Okay. Wait, the mice became prosperous? <laughs> <laughs> the mice... Well, that would I be crazy. Not prosperous. They started, they started businesses? Wrong word. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. That's crazy. Damn, these mice, these mice making investments. Um, <laughs> they just lived a long time. That's all. <laughs> Why do we always use that word when we're talking about longevity? It's uh, like goes hand in hand. That's anyways. Right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for calling me out on that. Um, yeah. So, so anyway, made them live a long time. So they lived a long time. They're healthy. Let's okay. put it that way. Yeah, yeah. They're healthy and vibrant. They're rich, they're rich, vibrant. They're rich in life. Vibrant. Rich in life. You guys, <laughs> I found it. It's vibrant. 
Uh, but anyway, so the scientist that uh, was observing this like decided to inject himself with it. Oh. And so, just like that, just like that, all, just all he needed was of all the, he needed a couple of mice, stories. right? That's not all he needs. Hey, this mouse just started a business. Yeah, together, <laughs> yeah. But of course, so far he's trying to report like health benefits from, but I don't know. I'm going to be like watching to Did see this what just happens. Happen? Uh, not that long ago, yeah. Oh wow, yeah. So um, and he's still alive. He's still alive. Yeah. So countdown's on. Why right. would you? Why? But why would you do that? And it's, it's six point like five million. Book. Yeah, it's we like gotta get, we got to get his name so we can like watch him. I'm sure he's got a, some social media. Problem, yeah, right. Yeah, well, watch. I mean, I don't know it. I want to look it up, but yeah. uh, I'd love to give him a shout out. Yeah. I'm supposed yeah. to give a shout out. <laughs> shout out to the. I'll scientists. look that up while you guys uh, converse. Who injected yeah. himself with bacteria from the permafrost because <laughs> he saw prosperous mice? He's, he's, I mean, you know. Uh, Who doesn't want to be prosperous? Not at all. All right. Do we have a we have a shout out for today? So I I got somebody had that um I might have brought him up a long time ago on here it, it, but he's I mean he's continued to grow and he's the, that comedian uh Tyler Fish. Oh, he's hilarious. Yeah, oh, Tyler Fish. So yeah. dude, I've been hilarious. following him for a really long time and I remember he started to really blow up in the during the vaccine. He do a lot yeah. of funny vaccine jokes that went viral. Yeah. Um, he's in that movie now that uh, Daily Wire just did. What's that? What's the new one oh, called? Oh, uh, that's the one where they have the dudes going in the in the ballers, uh, lady ballers, lady ballers, ballers. lady ballers. That so he's he got a role in that. I thought that was so crazy. I had been texting him for a long time. I was trying to get him to do like an opener. He, he offered to do an opener for like one of our live events. Oh wow! And I just never followed up and, and executed it. And I reached out to him again he's just hilarious. to congratulate hey, him. So yeah, he's definitely a worth a follow. For I found the ever. Russian doctor's name. What is it? So it's Dr. Brochoff. So B R O U C H K O V. Did you just make that up? I sounds like What's it. up, Brochoff? <laughs> Joy Mode was created to help improve blood flow throughout the whole body, including and especially in those special areas. Joy Mode is made with products and compounds that have been shown in studies to relax the blood vessels and help th things stand up strongly. Go check them out. Go to usejoymode.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump at checkout and get 20% off your order. All right, back to the show. First question is from Yulina Licka. Can overtraining and under recovery cause you to lose muscle and gain body fat? Absolutely, 100%. And, and there's a, a few reasons why. One is overtraining essentially means <clears throat> that you're adding too much or applying too much stress to your body or your body can't recover and adapt, okay, because it has to do both, recover and adapt to the stress that's being placed on it. And of course, exercise is a stress. And so when that happens, you're now in this chronic state of stress. And when that happens, your body is trying to conserve calories and it's trying to become more efficient. One of the ways it does this is by paring muscle down. And it shifts hormones in a way so that fat storage becomes more, um, more likely. So your body literally, think of it this way, it would be like um, you are, you know, with your family, normal economy, all of a sudden the economy crashes. What are you going to do? You're going to start saving money. You're going to talk to your wife or your spouse. And you're going to say, look, uh, economy crashed. Things are looking bad. Let's slow down the spending. Let's start cutting expenses and let's start saving yeah. as much money as possible because times are really scary. And this is what your body does when you're overtrained and not recovering is your body wants to move this direction. So you become weaker. You start to gain more body fat. Cravings go up to try to fuel some of this. It's just not a good place to be. You definitely won't build muscle. That's for sure. The only signal your body is receiving is the food is scarce and the demands on your body have increased, right? Yeah. And so uh, the, its natural uh, inclination is to try and preserve as much as possible in terms of energy uh, because it's because of the environment you're presenting it, even if that isn't the case, uh, because you're overtraining, you're you're adding a, an excessive amount of of movement on top of not probably eating enough calories to you know supplement that. That's all your body's receiving. It's important that we understand that our our body uh, doesn't want to carry a bunch of extra muscle. It's, it's an expensive tissue, energy wise, and it's only going to carry the the least amount it needs to to run efficiently. And so if you don't eat enough, you don't give it the building blocks for that and you overtrain the body, it'll get rid of it. It's not it's not ideal for it to have it. And so it's only going to operate with the least amount. And so it actually takes a lot of effort 
to keep building or adding or holding on to additional muscle than what you need to get through your daily activities, right? So you have the the least amount you need just to get through the, the, the things you do every single day. And then we go to the gym lifting weights, hoping that we send this signal to, hey, give my body some more muscle. It needs more muscle. But if we don't give it the building blocks nutritionally, uh, that it needs. It's not going to do it. And then if we also overstress the body so much that it's trying to defend all these things we're throwing at it, it's also not going to build muscle. Yeah. And, and look, you know, we can look at this from a different, a lot of different ways, but let's look at this hormonally. Overtraining causes depression of testosterone. It causes a depression of growth hormone. It causes cortisol levels to be elevated when they're not supposed to be elevated. You can see estrogen and progesterone imbalances in women you also get chronic inflammation. You know, it's like any stress that your body can't handle, it starts to break down. Um, and so this is a terrible place to be in. This is anti-muscle. This also encourages fat gain through many different methods, one of them being slower metabolism, hormone profile not so good, and also cravings. You are going to have more cravings when your stress levels are higher than what you can handle uh, for a few reasons. One of them is, you know, it's one way to, make yourself feel better in the moment. So you're kind of using it as a, as a way to, you know, medicate yourself. And the second reason is your body's like, Oh, too much stress. If there's food, eat it. Cause we got to save these calories, we gotta store these calories because this is an environment that's not so safe. Okay. Next question is from Jay Schaefer WA. What's the difference between cycling calories, high days versus low days, as opposed to taking the average and eating that amount every day? Well, the biggest difference, because there are differences physiologically, but let's start with the psychological because I think that's the most important thing to focus on. Real relaxed, balanced, healthy eating. And I say relaxed in the sense that you're not like counting every calorie and carrying food with you, right? But healthy, balanced, kind of relaxed eating, it's not going to look exactly the same every single day. I mean, it'll look similar. Most of us will eat the same thing for breakfast and lunch, but sometimes we'll go out for dinner. Sometimes we'll eat something different. We'll switch up the meat, whatever. So to eat the exact same calories and macros every single day just is highly unlikely. It just doesn't mirror real life. So it's a hard transition. It's, or I should I say it's a harder transition to go from there than it would be to have days that are higher carb, lower carb. The other thing is, uh, or higher calorie, lower calorie. The other thing is it allows you to, to pay attention to how you feel on days that are higher calorie or days that are lower calorie. Do I feel more sharp? Do I have more energy? Do I feel more groggy? More carbohydrates make me feel this way. More fat makes me feel this way. Higher protein makes me feel this way. Lower protein makes me feel this way. So it really, it's, it encourages you or it creates the environment where you can really pay attention to how your body feels. Now, physiologically, there's probably a pro-metabolism effect that happens from this. I think, especially when you're in a cut, eating low calorie all the time probably causes the metabolic adaptation where your metabolism slows down. You're probably seeing more of that happen versus some days are lower and other days are higher and some days are even above what you're burning. And that's been my experience. There's not a, not a lot of data to support that. There's a little bit that suggests it, but in my experience, the fluctuating seems to work better across the board. I have two different opinions on this um, and it depends on who I'm talking to. So I'm talking to a competitor uh, that is getting ready for a stage, which is a very small percentage of people that are listening to this. Um, I like the consistent same calorie every single day. It's just one less variable that we're trying to figure out what happened or didn't happen in a fluctuation of weight or change in body composition. It's just this. So it's like you eat this many calories every single day. This puts you in a it surplus or deficit. Yeah. Right. And so I'm looking at so many other variables. I don't want to eat that. And of course, that person is expected to be measuring, weighing, mm -hmm. tracking every detail. Right. If I'm talking to a person that is just normal general population that wants to be healthier, that wants to be fitter, I 100% am encouraging the up, the ups and downs, right? The the undulating the calories where one day's higher, one day's lower, learning to adjust it based off of how busy you are, your lifestyle, how you feel better. And that's just a more sustainable way to live. That's how I live if I'm not competing, right? If I'm just eating normal, it's like I have higher days, lower days, medium days. It's just this, this up and down. And it's not, I'm obsessing over hitting a certain uh, amount. So it really depends on who I'm communicating. As far as what the, the science says on it, one's better or not. I, I think we did a video, you and I did, Sal, years ago on the little bit of, of science that supports 
uh, the benefits of undulating, yeah. you know, that, that there's probably some sort of uh, adaption that happens if you're eating exactly the same amount of calories for a long time. And there's probably some benefits metabolically to, you know, fooling the body. You're going to get a lot one day, less than yeah. another day. And so there probably are some, but I, I think that's such splitting hair difference that that's not the reason why you would do it for more psychological totally. or lifestyle reasons. So if your general population, uh, the answer is there is no real major difference. I think it's better and healthier for you to learn how to undulate the calories. If you are a competitor and you are like dialing in, measuring and paying attention to everything, you want to I, control the I like to keep it controlled. So next question is from fitness by sunny as a coach. My philosophy is selling health first, then fat loss and muscle gain comes as a byproduct. Like you guys talk about. I'm having a hard time marketing this online <laughs> as selling health isn't sexy in comparison to lose 20 pounds in 90 days. Do you have any advice on how to sell or market a health first approach to an audience? I don't know. I don't know if we're qualified for this. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, I think we're we have the same, we have the same challenge, bro. Well, I mean, look, <laughs> we, we've done it. Challenge. We've done it well enough uh, to, yeah, yeah. you know, to get where we're at. Sure, and, sure, sure build a business that I think, you know, the podcast now has influenced a lot of trainers and coaches to communicate some of the ways that we do. He, look, I like the way the question was answered. I have, oh, excuse a, good, me, I have a good, I have an yeah. answer for this. I yeah, do. Yeah. Well, well, okay. I'll go. And then I want to hear what yeah, you have to yeah. say, but I, I like the way that this question is asked because you're right. You have to sell it. You have to sell it. And like, like any sales competition or any business, you got to sell what you're selling better than the other guy can sell what they're selling. Always. Yeah. So you can say, Health is more important than looks, okay? And people are going to agree with that, but ain't gonna, no one's going to buy that. No one's going to pay you money to, to, to buy that. They're going to pay the guy or girl that says, <clears throat> you're going to look hot if you do what I say. So you have to figure out a way to do this. So one way to do this is to tell people, if you try to look good, it ain't going to work. In fact, you'll look bad and you're going to get poor health. If you try to get healthy, you're going to look better than you did if you chased the looks and you'll get really healthy. So what am I doing is I'm doing this takeaway. This one doesn't work. This one actually works. And here's why it works. So you have to reword things and, and you have to communicate to people in a way that's going to get their attention. So if you, it, here's what'll happen. If you try to lose 20 pounds in 90 days, that'd be a great way to show people what's wrong. Here's what happens when you improve your health and get stronger. And then I would sell that. Like people have to understand that it's not it's not fast and slow. It's yes or no. I've said this before. Like it's it's right or wrong. One way gets there gets you there. The other way doesn't. It's not that one way is a slow way to do it, and the other way is a fast way to do it. It's literally there is only one way to do this, and that is to not sacrifice your health. You sacrifice your health, you're gonna look like shit. Bottom line, nobody who's has poor health looks good, and if they do, it doesn't last very long. Just maintain your integrity. I mean, it's it's pretty simple actually. If you're really focused on just trying to uh, gather as much attention as possible and get, uh, it, you know, uh, popular as you can. You're you're doing the you're doing it the wrong way. Master your craft, help as many people as possible. Do, uh, you know, your diligence in, in terms of like educating yourself, uh, and just be as consistent as possible with making the right moves and the right decisions because people are watching and people are way more aware and savvy now to see bullshit in. I think that, um, yes, that gets highlighted because it's it gets promoted and it's got all the money behind it. And there's a lot of like big business, uh, you know, that kind of drowns out a lot of the good messages. But uh, these days, especially, I just feel like there's there's definitely a, a you know, a starving sort of sensation from the consumer of finding somebody who is like consistently just delivering things that maybe aren't as popular, but are like. True. Yep. The the irony of this question is the answer is the same answer that this person's already figured out how to talk to their clients as far as the advice on how do I lose 50 pounds or how do I get in shape? And it is the the slower, more gradual process is the healthier, the better, the smarter way. The same thing goes for the health of your business. Instead of being so focused on acquisition, oh, good point. it's more focused on retention. And that and unfortunately we we live yeah. in this this social media era of it's this. so funny right he's making the same mistake these people are making. exactly how can i build my business faster exactly yeah. it's the same exact so the yeah, same great, exact applies great, and the reason point. why we've had success is because we didn't do it overnight we didn't do 
the challenges. We didn't do the before and after. Yeah, flash in the pan. And so it's taken a really long time to accumulate the mass and the success that this, this business has had now. But the beauty is we're not going away anytime soon. And that's what's cool about when you do it the, the slower, better, smarter way, just like with your clients and their fitness goals, it's more it sustainable. Sticks. They're going to be around here long term. It's going to be a lifestyle. The same thing goes for your business. And by the way, there's all kinds of business gurus out there. They're going to pitch you on funnel hacks and challenges yeah. and how to make 10 grand in a month and all these things. They're going to give you all these gimmicks to try and get you to build or scale your business. But the truth is, back to Justin's point, focus on your craft, be a good trainer, get better. The few clients that you do have service the shit out of them and mm -hmm. focus on retaining them because those people will go out and tell other people. This is the reason why we're, we are terrible at actually marketing our fitness programs. The reason why we do really well is because the people that go through them, that listen to the podcast, see Im major changes in their life, and they go tell five people. Mm -hmm. And then of those five people, three of those people see major changes and go tell five more people. And when you compile that over years and thousands of episodes that we've done this, now we've got a serious business on our hands. The same thing goes for you. It's just, a, it's a slower, more Damn, gradual what process. what a great example. Yep. Literally, he's asking the same question, as and he's falling for the same thing that his clients fought. That's That's great. Next question is from the Fit Life Lawyer. Sal and Adam have mentioned both having ADHD and how it's been both a struggle and an asset in their business life. Do you have any strategies or tips for someone dealing with it in navigating relationships and business projects? Can you think, say that again? I wasn't paying attention. So, so the, <laughs> the, 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 this is all self-diagnosed. <laughs> yeah, it is. No, no, no. I got real diagnosis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, he has real. I have I, official one. I have self. I don't know if I am same or not. I gave you the but I think card. I feel like you. <laughs> I feel like yeah, the same guy case. <laughs> Whatever. I'll, See, you're probably right, bro. You're probably right. Hey, you work with me, bro. I, usually you think I don't have Yeah, it. no, I do. Oh, I'm yeah, just saying. Yeah, like, right. I mean, here's it. Here, well, first of all, I think there's two, there's, this is two things. Relationships and business projects, I feel like have, have a little bit different advice, right? Uh, on how you would handle like ADHD, right? Um, I, the, the business project one, this goes back to the, what I, I say all the time is what I thought was the single best advice that anyone ever gave me in business, which was, Stop focusing on all the things that I'm not good at. Focus on the thing that I'm already good at and be fucking great. That piece of advice, because if you do have ADHD, you see you get distracted really easy. And when you when someone's telling you you're not good at this, you're not good at that, you're not good at this, you start your your scatterbrain, squirrel, squirrel, squirrel all over the place. One of the things that is good about ADHD is that when you do get locked in on something, you get super Hyper locked focused. in. Yeah, yeah, then everything else goes goes away. Yeah. So you know it's easy? It's to lock in on the thing that you're good at. So uh -huh. lock in on what you're good at and be fucking great. Double, triple down at that and become a master at whatever that thing is. And don't stress so much on all the other things. Outsource, and delegate. Yeah, the, the data, by the way, shows that uh, I think it's close to 80% of entrepreneurs would qualify as being diagnosed on that spectrum of ADHD. And that's not the normal population. ADHD does not make up 80% of the population. So there's a self-selection bias, essentially. So now you ask yourself, what is it that makes entrepreneurs entrepreneurs? Uh, well, first off, they like autonomy. They're risk takers. ADHD, the theory around it and why we have it in the first place is it probably evolved as a way to get people to take risks, mm -hmm. to seek out novelty, to hyper-focus. These are all potential strengths. All right, what are the weaknesses? Uh, disorganized. You can be very disorganized. You can be very forgetful. forgetful. Mm -hmm. You can be distracted. So what do these successful entrepreneurs with ADHD do? They hire people to do this shit they don't like to do. Right. That's a fact. Like, that's yeah, it. Like, 100%. You hire people to do stuff that you suck at. If you're disorganized, hire someone to do your organization. If you suck at your scheduling, hire someone to do your scheduling. And like Adam said, if you're good at the thing that you're good at, do that. Because nobody's going to do that better than uh, than you are. Now, as far as relationships is concerned, this is a tough one. Yeah. Uh, the more your partner understands what this mm. form of neurodivergence, this kind of category, uh, what it entails, the less likely they are to take it personal when you forget things or you change, You all of a sudden they're talking to you halfway through the while they're talking to you. It seems like you're not paying attention anymore or you go off or you forgot what they said or whatever. And it, it could be, people can take it personal. Like, you don't care about me. You're not paying attention. I've asked you this 17 times. Like, what's going on? Why can't you just do this thing? So I would encourage you to have your partner learn about this so they can kind of understand it. 
And then also understand your strengths. Uh, there are there are positives and negatives uh, to to something like this. There are for, for most things. So even even more importantly, and I think I think Sal, you're really good at this, and so I think this is important advice it, than having your partner go do their own homework. Is that is communicating it. Yeah. I think you do a, and owning it. You do a really good job of owning the flaws that come with ADHD, right? right? Like, yeah. you know, he doesn't try and mask it or pretend like he's not, you know, like that. I think that's the mistake that I think someone or has. Defend like, yourself. Like, like there's the... a bit, there's an ongoing joke on the podcast, right? That I always talk about how Sal can't be in a meeting for more than five. That's a true story. Like, he literally can't sit in a meeting for more than five, 10 minutes before he's spinning his fingers or he's on his phone or he's doing something else. And if you didn't know that he has that, it would be really frustrating. And if he didn't admit it and own it and yeah. be like, I'm man, I'm really bad. I'm so sorry. I'm you guys know I'm really bad. And so we've learned to try and work around that. God bless you guys. And, versus <laughs> getting frustrated, Matt. And a lot of the reason why that is, is, is purely it, the ownership of it. Because if you didn't take ownership of it and you denied it, or you acted like, yeah. or you got defensive about it, yes. then it would be a major problem. So if you if you are this way and you know that you have these flaws and because of these, you, you get distracted when you're, talking to your friends or your wife or whatever it may be like you got to own it don't get defensive and you got to be able to yeah. communicate to them like i'm sorry like you know this is one I, of my, yeah, my be weaknesses. Honest, here's what i was doing here's what my mind was i got yeah. all these things going on that's been a constant thing in my relationship i've had to learn how to openly verbalize right it's not just living in my head and i'm going and doing my tasks like i could normally do and that's where i get hyper focused is like i just bury myself in it i don't want anybody else that i need to explain anything to uh so it's just like acknowledging what your tendencies are with that and being more vocally uh communicating with your partner uh, and, and again, um, being successful helps. Yeah. <laughs> well, once you get to that point, it all gets easier. Honey, I, I'm sorry. I wasn't paying attention. But <laughs> look at our bank account. <laughs> See what happens. I, yeah, yeah. I, I, you here's know, a vacation. Here, here's another one too. Like with, you know, cause obviously we're all partners is when the opportunity arises for me to be able to do the thing that I know I'm good at. That's right. It goes back to the, I really yeah. take pride in doing that thing because it's now I can, now I can contribute, right? Cause I know I don't contribute in certain areas because it just, it's just very, it's hard, frustrating, whatever it doesn't work. But then when it's time for me to do the thing that I know that I do well, I'm so excited to be able to step up and, and contribute in that way. And I think it works for relationships. It does. No, that's a know? great, that's a great piece of advice right there because there's going to be examples in your home where you know, you're terrible at, you can get distracted left, right, or whatever like that in it. And you got to be able to communicate that to your wife or your partner and the things that you are good at letting her, her, or him know that, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to carry this for us. I know I'm really bad when you ask me to do these yeah. things and I'm going to keep working on trying to be better for that. But what I want, what I am going to commit to you and promise to you is that like, I know this is an area that you don't like to do or that I'm really good at or something like that. And I'm going to really carry it and like letting them know that and, and then doing that. Right. And then taking pride in knowing that like, Hey, listen, this is something that this is how I make up for my inability to do X, Y, and Z. Cause I get distracted. I will say this though, some strategies that can help that I um, have identified for myself and I've read about, and I think this, this is a kind of somewhat across the board is uh, create routines. Routines can be practiced and it can help you to not forget. So, uh, you know, I do this first thing in the morning, then I do this thing. And then my, my keys, keys always go here. My keys always, <laughs> always go here. And if I don't, if I have in my hand, I don't yep. put them down unless I can put them down right there. I always do this thing right before I go to bed. Um, exercise helps a lot. Diet helps a lot. Sleep helps a lot. The, the worse my health gets, the harder uh, everything else gets uh, along those lines. So good health, regardless of your situation, always makes things uh, a lot better. Look, if you love our show and you're a trainer, if you're a coach or a trainer, you got to come check out our free three-day training series. Literally, Ju uh, January 15th is the first day. There's two days after that. And I'm going to teach and coach trainers on how to be better. And I'm going to have some announcements to make as well. You can sign up for it. It's free for now. Okay. So if you go right now, it's still free. Later on, it might be charged, but right now you can go. It's mindpumptrainer.com. If you're a trainer or coach and you want to learn how to be more effective and more successful, go sign up. Again, it's mindpumptrainer.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpdestefano, and Adam is at mindpumpadam.